my YouTube. Okay, so hi guys, the Vianetta show here. How's it going? Good, good. Are you enjoying your holiday so far? Oh my gosh, are you like so excited that like everything is beginning to look a lot like Christmas? Yeah? No? Maybe? I hope you do. Okay, so today's video is gonna be about how to be a good friend and how to find those good friends. Okay, so, or like tips and tricks on how to watch out for them and, you know, how to treat one of your best friends that you want to treat better, but you just don't know how. So here's a couple of tips and tricks and quotes and, and what do you call it, uh, techniques? I don't even know, guys. Like, oh my god, I don't even know. So, do you see my tortoise in the background? Do you see him? Like, he's so small. And he's so cute. Like, look at this. Oh, say hi, big girl. Say hello. Hello, YouTube. Oh, he's so cute. He's my little button, baby. Yes, he is. Okay. He's trying so hard right now to find a really dark place so he can go back to sleep, even though he's been sleeping for like the past five days, guys. Five days. You would think at some point he's ready to get up and walk around and do something, but the only time he gets up and walk around is to eat and to find another dark place to sleep. Yeah, when people say that your pets are a lot like you, they do not lie. It literally takes them one glance at you and they have your whole personality. All he does is eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom. And believe me, if I wasn't in high school and I was a grown adult and my, bill, my bills were being paid for me, that's all I would do is eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom. So, on a most, on a, oh, he's actually digging. <laughs> anyway, on a more serious note. Look at that book. Okay, so like this is my tortoise book when I got Pick, and yes, guys, his name is Pickerel. Okay, you have an issue with that? I don't care. Deal with it. Anyway, so this is the book I got with him. Getting off topic, I know. So, he looks just like him. It's so cute. Ah! Okay, so going back to how to be a good friend and how to find those good friends and tips and tricks and techniques and qualities and 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 special needs is that even one i don't even know guys like is that even really one i don't know but if you guys are wondering about the lighting and why it is looking so majestically weird in here like why isn't it bright like always or if i'm usually doing a video that's not in bright light why isn't it dark or yeah, you want to know why? Because my room is decorated for Christmas. Yeah, my room is completely decorated. Like, all types of holiday, fancy, fancy, smanchies, um, junk. Yeah, I got so many decorations. Look, you can see pictures and bows are hanging up on the wall and I have mistletoes everywhere, although I will not be kissing a guy anytime soon. I even have lights on my bed. So, yeah. Anyway. Getting to the topic. Okay, so, I have a book that's called The Real Series. Making Real Good Friends, 30 Day, I'm Guessing, Devotions. This is what it looks like. And I know what you guys are thinking. Wow, she actually had to read a book on how to find good friends. That is so sad. It is not that hard to find them. Wrong. I never read this. I have it just to have it. I'm a book collector. I like to collect books, guys. Like, it's, I don't know. It's like a fetish thing. I have... I like to collect a lot of things, to tell you the truth. I like to collect marbles and bouncy balls and whatever. I literally have a big bin of books. So, I call it my mini library. 
if I ever want to read a book that's interesting or something I know I would like to read, I go to my mini library instead of a real library. Although I know that is weird. I'm a library card, guys, but it has a, a amount of money due to it, and I'm broke as heck. So, yeah. I'm actually just as broke as most Americans. So, oh, sorry, guys. Did I just offend you? I didn't mean to. Just saying the economy's not good and that it's not your fault that you can't barely get any money. Back to the show. So, I don't really know if this book helps. If you guys have this book, then leave a comment below and let me know if it really did help you make good friends or find good friends or whatever and such. But, here's my tip and tricks. Um, just recently, I know, guys, my hair is looking bad. Like, look, it's just, ah! Like, you just want to, like, scream and be like, oh my god, what is going on with her hair? I am going from relaxed hair to natural hair. So right now, it's in that really awkward, ugly, looking like a really bad haircut stage. And it's just not pretty, guys. Like, literally, this is the prettiest. I've gotten it to lay down in weeks, okay? Most of the time it's in a ponytail, which is actually also not healthy for the hair because it breaks it off and stuff and gets thinner in certain areas, so I know, guys, the struggle is real. Anyway, so my tips and tricks on how to make good friends. So let's see. Well, obviously the friend has to be there for you. They have to be supportive and compassionate and whenever you need somebody to lean on, they always have to be, you know, well, there for you. Um, how you can find a good friend. I'm only 17, guys. I haven't found my life promising friends, even though sometimes I think I did, but then like that friend will do 50 things that just makes me want to change my mind and say, no, I thought you were my lifelong friend, but now that I actually think about it, I just like totally lied and no, it's just bad. So just recently I was going through my list of friends and uh, realized that all the people who I thought was like going to be like my best friend, like throughout like high school and college and you know, just until the day I die, I now don't really see them in that future. Not how I'm, how they treat me right now, anyway. Now, if they change, then maybe. But if they stay the same, then they're just going to be the seasonal friend. Now, if you want to find a lifetime friend, we're going to look into this book of, of, of knowledge and see if there's any good tips and tricks here so yeah let's crack this baby open and <laughs> see what we can find okay so um oh geez pleasing God first although that is very important because God is the only one that can provide the right people for you in your life so you, of course, have to, you know, please him first. Once you can please him, the right people will just fall into your life like a masterful, wonderful, majestical, fanatical, is that even a word, guys? Fanatical? I don't even know. But, like, he'll just make sure the right people come along for you. So, I know I've had, I know I have, like, five people that can literally like I can see them being there for me until the day I die even like if beyond then they will still visit me at my grave because I just meant that much to them which is so sweet but of course you want more than just five friends because it's like five friends I mean that's not bad you know it's a whole hand guys it's a whole hand but it's like it you I don't know you just like want more than that and I just like totally dropped this book and lost my place so now I have to find it okay so choosing friends carefully chapter 
chapter two. Yeah, let's see. Well, some friendships help us honor God. These friendships should be nurtured. Nurtured. I can't read, guys. Hello. My mom's just like creeping in the background, and this is going on YouTube. So. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, um, other friendship places us in situations where we are tempted to dishonor God by disobeying His commandments. Friendships that dishonor God have the potential to do us great harm. This is very true. For example, let's say. Not to offend the people out there who have friends like this, but let's say that because the webcam mic is just not a good quality sound, so you have to like talk loud for them to hear you. Yeah, still going on YouTube. So <laughs> anyway, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, um, what was that? Oh, yeah, not to, <laughs> um, uh, kind of like, oh, I forgot what I was saying. I kind of a little corner here. What was I saying? I'm, like, out of train of thought. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, not to, like, offense the people out there who have friends like this, but, like, this is the best example I can think of, and uh, if you have friends like this, then maybe you should kind of consider getting new friends, because these people are just not good for you. So, and you deserve better, so. Okay. My mom just, like, keeps coming into the footage. <laughs> okay, guys, sorry. Anyway, um, so. The people I was talking about, like the ones that will have you dishonoring God, as the book says, or like, um, you know, just having you kind of, uh, even if you're not a Christian or not a God believer, then even people who are like, you know, just, just um, non-religious, I guess you would call it, like me personally, guys, I'm a Christian, so I believe in God. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all three guys there is three but yet they're all one it's kind of quite interesting but um, just to kind of clarify this up uh, the bad friends is like people who who smoke or like and I'm talking I'm not talking about like regular cigarettes although you shouldn't do those because they're bad for your body obviously but I'm talking about like smoking drugs, like something that can get you arrested, or something that's illegal, or something that's just really not good for your body that can actually cause you to get cancer, or disease, or even die later. So like that, and then like drinking to get drunk, and then acting like a fool, or even drinking or driving. If your friend comes up to you and says, hey, you're drunk, why don't you drive? You need to be like, ha, you're not funny and i could see that you don't care if i was to kill myself and kill you in the process so let me go find another buddy you know like yeah because drinking and driving is totally cool guys like yeah just don't do it guys it's just not cool like you're asking for the people around you and for yourself to get injured like that's just who came up with drinking and driving? Like, who comes up with this stuff? Anyway, because we tend to become like our friends, which is true, we, most cho we must choose our friends carefully. Because our friends influence us in ways that are, that are both subtle and powerful, we must ensure that our friends are pleasing to God. Okay, when they say that we tend to want to be like our friends, you may not notice it at first, but I guarantee you after you get finished watching this video, you're going to say, wow, I never really noticed that. And if you haven't noticed it, you're going to start noticing. So start noticing. Anyway, when they say we want to be like our friends, 
That means we want the stuff that they have. We want to do what they do. We want to be like that person. I know there's a lot of people that are saying, you know, oh, just be yourself. And it's true. Just be yourself. But don't be the self that you think is going to kind of get people's approval. Like, you don't need a person's approval. I am beyond different than from my friends, which is probably why I'm not as popular as most people would say. But then again, I am popular. So it's like, I don't know why I did finger signs around the second popular. I, what What is this, guys? Like, it's like finger work, and it's like, yeah. Anyway, so, I mean, like, people at my church, I know, like, half of my church. And my friends tell me I'm popular. My family tells me I'm popular. I don't see it, but apparently I'm popular. But I'm me being me. I'm not, like, I don't go and try to do what other people do, you know? Like, I don't go and be crazy and be wild and just to me guys that's childish not to offend the people that are out there that are like that if you think it's fun then you do it just be safe with it me i'm more of a person to be safe than sorry so the basics what you need to know your friends will be a major influence on your life so choose your friends carefully wow and then it gives like a whole bunch of Bible verses. Um, like, a friend loves you all the time and brothers help in the time of trouble. See? That's actually a really good Bible verse. It's from Proverbs 17, 17, NCV. I don't know what the NCV stands for. Going on to the next verse. As iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. Proverbs 27, 17. What's up with the 17 number? I mean, I thank God. It's just like, you know, I know 7 is my favorite number, but uh, I'm going to add it in 17 this time. We'll see just how lucky it is. Yeah. Okay. And that version is L-N-L-T. Still don't know what that version is, guys. Sorry about that. I have ESV and I have... Ooh, I can't even remember. NIV. How do you forget that? Like, really, B? You've had NIV majority of your life and you just got the yes, ESV, like, three years ago. Come on, B. If a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he lets, if he listens, he's... Oh, I cannot read today, guys. I'm sorry. <clears throat> if he listens, you've made a friend. Matthew eighteen fifteen M S G G. Okay, so a friend loves you all the time, and a brother helps in the time of trouble. This is true. Your true friends will love you all the time, like no matter what you do. Like, although I do not uh, recommend this, but even if you were to like hurt somebody to where like they end up in the hospital or even dead the friend that will be there for you no matter what and will completely think you are innocent or completely know you are innocent that is a true friend like they are going to be there for you no matter what another tip from me is i noticed lately that a lot of my friends who i thought were like my true friends aren't really like my true friends if you know what i mean like Sorry, guys. Um, I have a whole bunch of church friends that I call my best friends, but then I realize, oh, wait, they're not really my best friends, you know? Like, my best friends to me is people who are going to be there for me and who are going to be excited to see me and who are going to be, like, trying to keep our friendship relationship strong. Like, I'm not the only one who's working on the relationship. They are also like, you know, hey, it's Monday, or hey, it's Thursday, or hey, it's Saturday, or, you know, let me call uh, Vivi and see what she wants to do and see if she wants to hang out and stuff. So those are, if you have people who call you up and it's like, hey, what do you want to do this weekend? I want to hang out with you. Those are your chief friends. If you have people who are always there for you and they're never ever using you for nothing, those are your true friends. Now, if you have a friend or friends, as I have, 
who claim to really, really care about you, but then, like, as soon as it's time for them to go out or do something, they don't even think to call you or uh, invite you to that event. That's not a true friend, obviously. That's just a hi and goodbye friend. So, me, personally, I, per I would prefer a friend that thinks about me, whether if I am in sight and in mind or out of sight, out of mind, you know? So... That is my personal take on it. Um, how to be, finally, moving on to step number two, how to be a good friend yourself. Like I said um, before in step one, to have a good friend, you, um, you know, also need to look for the personality and the cat and the passion and the kindness and the uh, passion of, of them wanting to hold a relationship together. Okay, so if you have a friend like that, that's great. Congratulations. Thumbs up. Like, that is awesome. But in order to be a good friend, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to say this backwards. If you want a good friend, you have to be a good friend. See what I'm saying? Like, if you want people to care about the relationship, you have to care about the relationship. So instead of them calling you all the time and saying, hey, you want to hang out, you should take the time out of your day and out of your schedule to check up on them and be like, hey, you know, um, I know it's been a long time, but how's it going? I just, I was thinking of you, so I thought I'd call and stuff. So, um, you know, or whenever you're going out to an event and you're like, who, who would like to come with me? Then you can also call that friend and be like, hey, I'm going to the movies or to the mall or I'm going skating or ice skating or whatever. Um, especially now that it's almost the holidays, you can be like, hey, I'm going to go look at some Christmas lights and get some ice cream. You want to come with me? You know, this would be a great uh, event for us. That would be great. That is how your friend knows that you are a true friend to them. And that is how they know that you actually care enough for them to actually try and involve them in your life and to involve them in your events and to actually try and keep the bond strong. Um, another thing, if you're having... I'm putting this book away now, like, bye-bye, the Be Making Friends book, or the Making Real Good Friends book, I told you I cannot read today, anyway, um, if your relationship with your friends are kind of down spiraling, like, it's just not going well, then I recommend that you talk to him, the big guy upstairs, um, he is always a friend to you. He is always a friend, a father, a, a husband. Yes, and he, he will always be there for you. I mean, like, if you don't have, if you feel like you're all alone and you don't have anybody in the world that cares about you, like, literally, like, not even, you don't even feel like your family cares, like, cares or even understands you, you have him. He made you he created you, he fingered you together, and he kind of made love for you in his heart, and then he put you in this world. So he loves you a lot, like more than you can even imagine, and then times it by five, and then times it by 25, and then times it by 152. He loves you so much. So if you ever feel like, I don't have any friends, like I'm just all alone and nobody will ever understand me, that's not true. You have one person, and you will always have one person who will always love you, no matter what. He may not be visible, and he may not be touchable, which I can understand how that feels. I get that feeling sometimes. But he is there, and he is listening, and if you really, really pay attention, he shows you that he's there. So, that's all for this episode of The Vianetta Show. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. Like, comment, subscribe. Please subscribe. We like subscriptions. Um, if you think this little guy is cute, you will thumbs up this video. Bye, Tickles. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mommy, or <laughs> me, I have cookies waiting for me, so... Bye, guys. Hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, fantabulous, a very merry Christmas. 
And if you guys decorated your room like how I did or even different, it doesn't matter. If you guys decorated for the holidays, leave me a video response or a comment or like this video. Even if you did do it, you just don't want to do neither. You just want to do something simple, then like the video. We like likes too. Actually, no, we love likes. So, thank you so much guys for watching and for tuning in and for staying throughout the whole video. <laughs> oh, I almost hurt myself. I'm always hurting myself. Me and my club is it so. But, yeah. Hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. Let me know what you guys are getting for Christmas or what you are excited to get or what you don't know you're gonna get but you're hoping you're gonna get. Let me know how your holiday goes. Bye, guys.